Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. My name is Jamie Scott Okutaya, founder and CEO of JSA. And along with me is my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Good morning, Evan. Hey, Jamie. Good to see you. And we call ourselves new. I mean, we've been at it a year. And I we're know. by and far the biggest, and I'd say only podcast in telecom and data center. Oh, uh, but but which shows you how niche our, our niche is. But thanks uh, uh, to listening and joining and where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading telco and data center world supporting the infrastructure requirements of this new normal. So Jamie, we're filming actually a little bit before uh, Christmas. Uh, so happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. happy holidays, whatever I've missed. But what's your favorite sort of holiday tradition? Yeah, happy everything, right? Well, so, oh, so many favorite. I mean, I love this time of year. I'm, I'm like Christmas, <laughs> Christmas crazy. Like I, I just, I love this time of year. But last night I, I threw a little party, a little get together for some of uh, my mom friends uh, in my neighborhood. And we did a white elephant gift exchange. I don't know if you've ever been familiar, but basically a uh, person opens a gift in the, in the center everyone brings a gift someone just randomly opens up a gift and then the next person that goes they can either open that gift or steal from the gift that's already been open uh so you go around the circle everyone you know puts number one through ten um and the person at the end basically can steal whatever gift they want um so it gets a bit vicious it's so this fun. sounds treacherous this sounds yeah. like uh brutal yeah you, you're like clinging to your gift if you like it a very nerve wracking and uh, remind me never to come to one of your white elephant parties. <laughs> but I, I just <laughs> like I just like sitting around the fire. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a for a good old fashioned real fireplace, not the gas kind, Aww. but the kind with the soot and the smell and the ashes like the old days and uh, just getting slowly drunk in front of the fireplace. So um, but let's get on to some other hot news. Speaking of fire, we have an amazing guest. And you know, guys, Data Movers, we've been very blessed to get the best of the best guests here on J uh, Data Movers. And today, no difference. Uh, we've got the fabulous Justin Marin, CEO of Strategic Venue Partners, joining us. Justin, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I don't know about the best of the best, but but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best <laughs> to give you a good perspective. Um, coming to you from our new offices in Greenwich, Oh. which uh literally new offices so you can it looks like i'm in an insane asylum with nothing behind me but white walls <laughs> and, and empty desks but you can't see all the boxes that are over here in our in our new office space so other than my plant making it in and my fake chagall um that's that's, <laughs> a, that's about that's about as far as uh we have right now um as far as an unpacking is concerned uh, i like a man who prioritizes amazing well. yes. greenwich yeah. connecticut beautiful city you see it you know when taking the train in from Boston to New York City. Is it true Greenwich, the streets are paved with gold? Is yes, that actually, that, that's, it's very true. There's tons of potholes because people are constantly trying to dig out the gold um, <laughs> and take it home with them. So uh, your tires take a beating here for sure. And traffic's a bitch. Uh, that's right. But <laughs> yeah. you didn't grow up in Connecticut. Where are you from originally? Where, where's uh, where, where did you go to school? I, where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey, um, which which has oh, a, a, a yeah, a lovely stigmatism against it. Um, I, I, I grew up in New Jersey, right outside the city. Um, I've lived all around the world, effectively, but uh, Connecticut's been been my my home state for the past 20 years or so. Um, although, if you're from New Jersey, getting rid of your Jersey roots is very difficult, mm -hmm. uh, because even though I've lived here for 20 years, you know, my, my cell phone is still a 973 number, which everybody makes fun of me, which is a, a new North New Jersey area code, <laughs> you know, and they're like, why won't you adopt the fact that you've lived in, in Connecticut and own places here for the past and work here? Um, and I try and explain to them that outside of the Jersey shore, uh, which none of those people are from New Jersey, just for the record, I believe, um, you know, it's something that you, you, you don't want to get rid of uh, if, if that's where you're from. Yeah, fun fact, I started JSA 17 years ago almost um, in Hoboken. Oh, there you go. 
Yep, and I still have my East Coast uh, area code. I import it wherever, I, you know. I mean, yeah. someone who knew me 20 years ago might want to phone me and I want to have the right number in his, right? Exactly right. Well, exactly. I know all about New Jersey. I watched the Many Saints of Newark recently, so I, I have the whole, <laughs> the whole history. Love but what, it. you know, Justin, what's one favorite memory of yours uh, growing up in the Garden State? What, what do you look back on fondly? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I hate, I hate to harp on it again, but if you're, I was from North New Jersey um, and believe it or not, the, the Jersey Shore, again, outside of the TV show, um, there, there are parts of it that are just gorgeous, right? And I remember growing up there, going to the beach, surfing as a kid. Mm. Um, and it was just, it's something that doesn't leave you. There's something more, you know, beautiful about it. Um, and again, people drive down the, the turnpike mostly, you know, and they see all the crap in New Jersey, but they don't get to see the, the beautiful parts of it. And, and part of that's a shore for sure. Yeah, it really is. So when you were a kid staring out at the beautiful beach, did you have a dream job or idea of what you'd like to become? A hundred percent. You know, I, I wanted to become that and tied to many visits to SeaWorld as a child. I wanted to become a marine biologist um. and my my father is no longer with me for quite some time reminded me that it's extremely hard work a lot of education to make no money um and, you know and so uh i was quickly you know after after growing up a little bit you know i, I disillusioned with that idea and went, went a different direction well good good choice and i was really excited actually to speak with you today because i'm a wireless infrastructure and networking fanatic myself in fact, I, I was so excited about the vaccine. I asked for 5G to be put specifically in my in my vaccine uh, be, because it's wireless. But you've had an interesting career, a transition into wireless, coming from finance into the energy sector, which has a lot of similarity to the wireless networking space. So tell us about that journey. How did you go from one sort of segment to the next? Yeah, I got out of school you know, in the late 90s, 99, 2000. Um, I spent a year in the city doing that, and, and the joke was always, if the windows opened, I would have jumped out. Um, <laughs> and, 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 uh, you know, and I saw, I saw the need, uh, so from finance, we went into towers. Um, and really, the, the, the motivation there was, I wanted to be in the real estate business. I wanted to be in the reoccurring cash flow business. Um, and at the time, you just you couldn't compete. You know, this is pre-explosion of REITs everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really wanted to be in the commercial, you know, commercial mall business. Um, and you just couldn't compete, right? If you want to move to North Carolina or South, I mean, the Northeast, you know, and or on the West Coast. So I could have, I guess, moved to South Carolina and started buying malls and doing that type of work. Um, I didn't want to do that. And, uh, you know, the, the thought at the time was wireless phones were taking off. Um, as a side note, I had a, I had a fraternity brother uh, who, whom I loved. Um, and his parents were both neurosurgeons. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in college and this kid had a cell phone. And I, I was like, who are you? Like when growing up, the most important <laughs> people would have cell phones, right? Like right. doctors, police, et cetera, politicians, I'm sure. And I was like, nobody needs to hear from you, right? Like you are the least important person in the whole world. Um, why do you have a cell phone? And his parents gave it to him because they wanted to get in touch with him. And like the, the idea started germing in my head, like if this idiot, again, who I love, has a cell phone, you know, more people are gonna have cell phones, right? Okay. And you start thinking about like just connectivity and then it's like, okay, well, if he has one, then you're gonna wanna give one to your parents. And then, you know, and then parents are gonna wanna have it for their kids and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the idea started snowballing from there. Um, and then, uh, you know, we went out and built a bunch of cell towers and, and, and started providing solutions to the carriers then. Um, still have some of those sites. Uh, you know, we sold we sold a bit off and and uh, use those monies to go into the renewables areas. Um, and you had said that you know there's a crossover, and there really is. You know, some from building a, a cell tower to a wind turbine, um, it's very similar. You know, the only the only difference is the size of the caissons, right? And and as opposed to propagating wireless signals, you're 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 selling power. And so instead of having a, you know, an agreement with Verizon to propagate a signal, you have a power purchase agreement, right, to sell power back into the grid at, at that side. And, and we're following the tax incentive dollars, 
um, you know, that at this point in time, mid 2000s towers were going crazy. I mean, wind was going crazy, uh, predominantly in the in the you know Midwest through the, the Southwest and parts of the North uh, Northwest at, at the time through Southeast California. Um, and so we were kind of on the forefront of that and, and, and doing things like, I guess if there's a, if there's, if there's a concept behind what we've done, it's always, you know, water ski behind oil tankers. Right. And I'll get into that, like what we do in wireless. But what I mean by that is you had these large organizations that were building massive amounts of infrastructure, but nobody was kind of doing the middle market and smaller type of build outs. And so we focused on that and, and really started building on systems there. Same thing happened with solar. Um, you know, we, we, we sold off that and, and moved into solar. And again, at the time, um, folks were folks and companies were focused on building two, three hundred million dollar type of, of solar plants. Nobody was looking at ten to hundred million dollar type of solar plants and mm-hmm. or distributed generation behind the meter type of stuff. Um, and so so that's kind of the solution we started providing there. And that and that was successful. And, and then, of course, found our way into wireless and uh you know and uh, there's so many there's so many similarities along the way that um you know we'll get into on the call but but uh that that was part of that 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 trajectory of how to get here you you have like a magic vision you can predict where where the tide is turning it's brilliant what was your aha moment when you decided to leave energy for wireless infrastructure investment and development at your current firm strategic venue partners svp yeah, again, the thought was, you know, a couple of things. One, how do we solve problems? Where is the opportunity? Um, how do you compete against, against again, large oil tankers, right? And so you can't compete against American Tower, Crown Castle, the public companies, uh, even what Mark Ganzi was building at, you know, pre-digital uh, colony, I guess now. Um, and so their cost of capital is what it is. Uh, you're not going to go out and buy cell towers, right? I mean, it just it's not it's not a profitable space if you're if you're like us in our size. And the thought was, all this infrastructure had to be built out um, in the enterprise market, right? And what I mean by that is real estate, healthcare, malls, not necessarily airports or stadiums, um, where it is still needing to be built out. But it was really in this other area. Um, and and the and when you think about providing a solution. Um, you know, the, the wireless carriers are highly focused on the highest foot traffic areas. Um, but then if you, and, and they're willing to pay to be in those areas. But then if you take a step back and you say, I'm looking out my window at a bunch of different offices here, and you say, these guys need connectivity, just like a stadium does, right? There's no difference. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is, how do you provide them that type of solution? And what's the right way to prosecute that type of concept? And so, um, so we launched SVP with that in mind. Um, you know, started off with like, we have the right idea. Um, everybody said it can't be done the way we're doing it. And so when you have the right idea, you know, you need just to be persistent and keep following that right idea to then make it successful and kind of prove everybody wrong. Um, and you have a window to do that, you know, as far as timing and your capital and everything else. And, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I have a crystal ball in my head, but, um, and, and I'm sure a lot of it's luck along the way, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we, we've done it and we've, we've done it pretty well so far. Yeah. Love the mission. That, that's really fantastic. We're actually recording this on a 5G connection. I'm in a, a big Hilton and uh, a hotel chain and tremendous 5G coverage, ultra high speed 5G. They must have some kind of in building wireless service. So. That's just a, f- a fantastic opportunity. Uh, it seems across hospitality as well as healthcare and Absolutely. and retail and other places. So, so tell us more about SVP's mission of of disruption. Mm-hmm. That's a heavy uh, uh, challenge given the wireless sector today. Uh, so, what's what's your perspective as a smaller, nimbler player out in this market? That's just it. I hate to keep going back to the to the oil tanker analogy. Um, and I'm not smart enough to think of another one, honestly, but the thought is oil tankers can't pivot quickly, right? I mean, they do what they do. And, you know, we kind of water ski off of their wake um, and say they throw off enough wake. There's so much business out there to be done. And so, so when we thought about our solutions, it was like, how do we provide the proper solution to help somebody? Um, and, and, and that's really the genesis of, of SAP and how we think about it. Um, and, and we start from there right? Like, how do we fix this problem? What's the right way to do it? How to get everybody's interests aligned, 
right? Like you alluded to the fact that you're in a hotel. Um, again, they need the connectivity no different than, than the airport you said you're in DC, right? So, so you know, Reagan, Dulles, they need the same connectivity as the hotel you're in, as the business down the road you're in, but they all come at it from a different perspective. Um, and, and we're how, sick, and, sick and tired of crappy Wi-Fi that we pay, you know, 15 bucks a night for when you have this amazing 5G yeah. uh, spectrum that's just out there and available. Yeah, absolutely. And so part of our part of our platform is, is a little bit of a secret sauce. So I don't want to give away all of our secrets to be. Oh, come on. Give, give it all. Let's, let's um, listen to data movers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think. I think there's a ton of, of growth in this space. Um, that's what we're hyper-focused on. Um, there's a ton of room for everybody in it, you know, um, that's for sure. Um, and a lot of folks are moving up and down that, that ladder where you see companies going after the, the larger type of portfolios and these the large guys trying to come down to, to the, what we call the enterprise market where you can consolidate about a bunch of assets. Um, but we're, we're happy, you know, with, with what we're doing. And, uh, you know, our goal is to continue doing this, <laughs> you know, that's somewhat off the radar, even though I'm on a podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and can you explain to our listeners what it took to, uh, to bring your vision to reality and what it means to you and your customers? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, took us, it took us launching it, taking the risk ourselves. Um, you know, my partners and I pushed the money forward, built the business that way. And then really we had the, we had the right sponsors. Um, you know, when, when we got to certain critical mass, um, Tiger Infrastructure Partners, who, who, is, who are our sponsors, really smart guys. They saw the opportunity the way we saw it, um, and they believed in us, and they backed us, uh, from, you know, really from the onset. Um, and so that's great, right? When you, when you have people that, that are willing to say, okay, we get it. We see your vision. We know there's a ton of risk involved. We believe in the team and, 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 and we'll help you get there. Um, but we also believe in, in the opportunity, right? And so, so um, that's, that's kind of where, where, the, where the launching side came from. Yeah, we hear so many great things about Tiger. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Great Fantastic. guys. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to do, we don't have time today, but I'd love to do a deep dive on the technology front. I, I follow this EBRS private 5G networking space, and it, it's such an amazing opportunity maybe we could do a part two with your technology expert experts but it, from the ceo perspective at, at svp uh what does the future look like to you i, I hate to ask for five-year predictions because invariably we, we can't we can't think a year or two ahead much let alone five but what is your long-term perspective on the industry and where is it's going yeah to touch on what you started off with the cbrs right and we, we could definitely do the deep dive there um you know we're in that space too Right, we have the largest CBRS system, I think, in the country. Um, it's, wow! It's a, it's at it's at a large, uh, brand new casino in Las Vegas called Resorts World Las Vegas. Um, I think there's there's something to that, right? I think it's and it's kind of like the I explained to people it's kind of like the internet in 2000. You know, where everybody's like, this thing's cool. We don't know how we're gonna make money off it yet, but everybody's rushing into it. Um, you know, and, and so I think there there'll be a model in CBRS, and there there are those out there that are a lot smarter than than me that that can talk on that, and certainly within my firm, um, and be happy to do that. Um, I think from a from a five year perspective, there just needs to be so much infrastructure built out, um, specifically on the in building side, right? So right now the carriers are really focused head down focused on building out their macro networks, um, but the reality is, you know. 80 plus percent of calls originate indoors, right? And those are calls. Forget about all the data and everything else that goes through there. So, so there's there's an area that 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 they're not focused on yet. They, I mean, they know it's real, right? Um, and so they only can do things in stages. And so we're trying to build out that type of infrastructure and and bring them in with us as we as we move along. Um, but I think there's just a tremendous runway uh, in this enterprise space, especially for wireless connectivity. And part of that's DAS and part of that CBRS and part of that will be Wi-Fi, you know, and there's just so many different sectors in, in the, in the, in the wireless space. Um, and like I said, there's, there, there's room for everybody. Um, and we know folks that, that focus on specific verticals and, and we have a few ourselves um, and we're all kind of running our, our own little businesses and, and trying to get to scale um, in those markets. Mm -hmm. it, it just, I, I love speaking with you, Justin. It's just, it, 
I feel like there's so many little morsels you drop and I, I just like want to dive in. So yes, we definitely have to do a part two of this. I think that's a awesome. fabulous idea. Um, but I do want to get to the fun, uh, fast, rapid fire question section of our, of our podcast. Oh. So think of the first thing that pops into your mind when we ask you some uh, funny little questions. Here we go. So what's the most interesting thing that not many people know about you? Wow, I'm pretty open book. <laughs> you know, and I have a big mouth and I talk a lot. So, <laughs> so people people certainly know the uh, everything about me. I think the circling back to your your first question, you know, what gets me up and going every day? Are really two things. Um, naturally, my kids, right, and trying to build something that they're they're, they're proud of, and, and that you know one day maybe they'll do something with. Um, I think the the second part of that is, you know, we've been talking about. I guess, and I keep using the stupid analogy, but but I love trying to create businesses um, that that are off the main path to start, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of see where these needs are, fill those needs, build those businesses up, um, and grow them from there. I think you know that that gets me going, right? Like like how can we disrupt things? How can we do something different? Um, because if you're if you're in line to do what everybody else is doing, um, that's fine, uh, but I don't think it's not as exciting, okay. right? Okay. And you're, it's yeah. not fun, right? And, and, you, and if it's not fun and there's no risk, right? You know, then you're not going to get the reward out of it typically, right? So like, you know, the, the old counterbalance is the more risk you take, the greater the reward. And hopefully, you know, hopefully you win more than you lose, right? And, and everybody in the world's got losses. Yeah. Um, but, but sometimes getting those wins is, you know, makes up for those losses. And it's, it's uh, like losses along the way are the best way to learn um but but the w's are, are just as much fun i don't know how much uh truth this is but i certainly heard that elon musk was like nearly bankrupt before he started tesla <laughs> right the guys like, get the guys and those are insane you know 300 billion dollars now or whatever the hell it is i know the markets have been tanking recently but, but um you know it's yeah, he's he's, it. i think he's doing just fine <laughs> yeah but again, but again another guy that said hey like this these solutions need to be met right and 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 someone's got to do it so i'll do it um, and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Great story. Yeah. Uh, so we're in the holiday period. What, what's a movie you could watch over and over again on, on replay? Mm -hmm. Um, God, my, my kids, like, even though they're older, um, I mean, certainly the home alone series they love, right. They love Kevin <laughs> and they love, they love that aspect. Um, and I mean, you just can't go wrong. There's Christmas, especially, right. Is, is that time where you have like, Elf and the Grinch and like Home Alone and National Lampoon's Christmas. I mean, there's there's so many that I've seen ten thousand times that I know over the next coming weeks are just going to be on repeat in our house. Literally on on the Christmas Story, I think they play it on a channel that just back to back. <laughs> so I think I I think I know every line by now. But yes, Jamie. Yes. Yeah, it it makes it makes the holidays feel like the holidays. Like there's something nice about welcoming them back into your your home again like you know same thing with christmas carols like i, I did i mention i was christmas crazy earlier <laughs> yeah, sing, sing, sing your favorite carol for us jamie right now just for the uh um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you that's a, that's another episode. Yeah, but that's on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll hit that in the next deep dive. I want to hear. I want to hear Jamie's songs. More songs by Jamie. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, what is the best new app on your phone that you've come across recently? Oh wow! Um, I'll tell you a good one uh, for those people that have children out there. Mm. Um, it's called Bark app, um, and so just a tip for all the parents: I have two teenage kids and a, and a middle school kid. And they're addicted to these things, you know, these and whatever the heck else they have that's that's connected. And the best thing I ever did was get this app on my phone and limit their time, right, on, on these devices. And it was met with the utmost fiercest resistance. Uh, but <laughs> it's kind of like you click the button, turn off their phones, and you and or you could set these times. Um, and it's just like oh, you, 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 like they come running down. My phone doesn't work. I said, okay, good. Go outside and go dig a hole. You know, go, 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 I love it. Go play some basketball. Go go do something that's not attracted to your phones, right? Um, and so so just a tip. That's, that is worth its weight in gold. I'm going to actually download that and set it for myself. 
I think. <laughs> that would be smart. Because I'm a complete uh, junkie when it comes to my phone. That's but uh, but yeah, thanks, thanks so much for joining us, Justin. Really informative and insightful. And it's great to see the next wave of innovation in wireless happening with companies like SVP, you know, nimble, small, uh, newer entrants. And I think that's where all the exciting stuff is going to come from over the next year. So thank you. Honor, honor and pleasure was mine. You know, I really appreciate the invite to do this with you guys today. Uh, we, we, we love chatting with you, Justin. You always blow my mind uh, and, uh, and I love everything you're doing there at SVP. Definitely a company to watch. So thank you so much for your time. And listeners, if you enjoyed our Data Movers podcast as much as we've done, please go ahead and check out jsa.net slash podcast for other upcoming episodes. We release every other week on Wednesday morning. So please join us. Yeah, and follow us and engage us on Twitter. We need more tweets mentioning the podcast. Anyone who tweets, listen to this and tweets at me gets a $30 voucher for the holidays. So I want to, let's, let's gamify this and let's get some, some, uh, some reactions to the show. Thanks Ooh. so much. Ooh, you heard Thanks, it here first, guys. All right, everybody, <laughs> stay safe, enjoy the holidays. And have Take care. Day.